I've taken as the title for this series of reflections the following phrase, the last lap. And I've done so for a very specific reason and to express a very public gratitude on my part and on the part of the United Dioceses of Dublin and Glendalough to a particular individual. And I'm delighted that these talks are coming from a parish church within our Diocese of Dublin and Glendalough, that is Holy Trinity Rathmines. The last lap. These were the final words in this life that my friend David Tui spoke to me when I went to see him in his extreme illness in Cherryfield, the Jesuit residential and nursing home in Milltown. He had just moved some months before to the Jesuit house in Leeson Street when he received his diagnosis of cancer. And I am just not sure if his books ever followed him, because he got no time to spend there, so rapid and so all-consuming were both treatment and ailment. Books and writing were David's life. He saw his vocation to service of God as centered in education, education as a place of both mission and justice. What he said to me on that evening was this, Michael, I think that this is the last lap. I heard it and I remembered it. He died soon after. It also reminded me of the athletic vigor of running the race of which we hear in St. Paul. Like everything with David, it was not sentimental. It was factual and in the utterly changed circumstances, really sad. Most of all, it was honest and godly. He had told me long before that he was not frightened of dying, but he was frightened about how it would happen. God was merciful to him and brought him kindly oblivion. David also told me and many others that he had dreamed of being lowered into the presence of Jesus on a sheet. Like the biblical story of the friends lowering their friends through a hole gouged out in the roof of a house, not for healing perhaps as we know it, but for being in the presence of Jesus. He was, after all, a Jesuit, Jesus, in whose society he rejoiced. His dream had four groups of people lowering that sheet. His family, his friends, his academic colleagues, and the Jesuits. In this way, his whole life led him to Jesus and to Christ the healer and lover of his soul. That phrase then, the last lap, does not seem to me to point to a defeat, more a new, if frightening, adventure. David was among the first ecumenical canons of Christ Church Cathedral. His linking of education and mission and justice as a primary role of religion inspires and upholds me in dark times. And so it is in homage to him that I offer these reflections on the last lap, the last lap of Jesus and those who follow Jesus still.